just woke up, but I was dreaming. I was dreaming about AMC. You know what's funny is that if if me and you, meeting like all of my retail brothers and sisters, if we haven't been through so much corruption, manipulation for the last uh, over two years, Adam Aaron's plan actually sounds, it actually, like if, if you were hearing this for like the first time, if we were all entering AMC for the first time, it actually sounds like a pretty solid plan. It, it really does. Like in other words, hey, this is his point. We're AMC, okay? We're a brand name. We are the largest movie theater corporation in the world. We should not be trading at single single digits. It makes perfect sense, you know. By doing this one for 10 reverse stock split, not only does it bring AMC up to a price that is, you know, a more acceptable price for the stature of the company, meaning that it is the world's largest movie theater chain. It raises capital for the company. It helps it get out of debt. It can issue, you know, more shares and, and you know, and make more money and, you know, more delusion that would just keep the company running. And I mean, on, on a corporate standpoint, this is what I'm trying to say. I'm not talking about us. Let, let me be very clear. I am not talking about us. I am talking about on a corporate standpoint. It makes perfect logical sense. And even to a certain degree, to its shareholders, it makes sense. But now this is the thing. Will all of this happen the way Adam Aaron says? See, now this is the big effing question, Paul. <laughs> okay, so how do we know what's going on behind closed doors? And this is the shit that I hate about Wall Street, if you want me to tell you the truth. And I've gotten to a point where I've, I really am getting like physically sick and tired of Wall Street. Because there's always shit going on behind closed doors. It's like a circle. It's a circle of corruption, a circle of manipulation. And we are not in that circle. We're outside. It's like that move. Remember Gordon Gecko, Michael Douglas? He goes, you're either inside or you're outside. So in other words, I notice this a lot. And I don't know if you're following this conversation. But you ever notice how someone paints a picture and the picture looks like uh, beautiful, you know? So you look at it, you see a boat, you know, it's sailing in the ocean. It's got a sunset and, uh, you know, people are smiling and they're happy on the boat and they're enjoying it and having a great time. And everything looks like it's a beautiful picture. It's a beautiful day until all of a sudden this big, gigantic Tasami friggin' tidal wave knocks them over and they, they're not smiling anymore. The, the, the boat gets wrecked. You see a guy go flying. Ah! It's a, so, I, so the thing is that that's kind of like how Wall Street is. Because, you know, the plan that he's proposing looks good, seems good, right? I mean, doesn't it seem good? Get the company out of debt. Get the company in good fundamental, uh, you know, status. More moviegoers are going to be going to the movies. Get the company p profitable. Do everything you have to do to make the company last. To stay in business. To keep moving forward and to ultimately recover from this, right? Okay. Which ultimately would mean the short sellers would eventually run scared in the sense that this company is getting fundamentally better. Company is getting fundamentally better. It's no longer going down. We we're out. We want to close our positions, right? So it, it it's like a kind. Of, that's why because I speak to a lot of people who are actually out of Aaron fans who voted yes, you know, and they they all tell me the same things. But, but the you know the thing that nobody seems to understand, even like Tony Danero and all these other supporters of this is that Will and Tara, just to name a few, I mean, Citadel and everybody else, short the living crap out of AMC 
after this one for 10 before a stock split. Because when you're losing 90% of your shares, I get the math. I'm like that guy, that scavenger guy, you know, what's his name? Scavenger stocks. He made a video about me. He made a video like explain it to, to Abe Father like it's a six year old. Okay. You get the same money. You, 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 you don't understand, Abe Father. You don't understand. Okay. Because the price of the stock is going up 10 times, your money and your portfolio will be exactly the same. I'm, look, I'm not an idiot. Okay. I understand all of that. But the question, all right, so let me give you an example. Let's assume I have 10,000 shares of AMC. After the one for 10, I, I now have 1,000 shares. Now, let's just say AMC is at $50 a share, okay, after the one for 10, right? So I got $50,000, right? In both cases, if, if, if I have 10,000 shares and AMC is at $5 a share, I have $50,000. If I have 1,000 shares and AMC is at $50, I have $50,000. So in both cases, I have the same exact amount of money. But here's the big freaking problem. In, in Terra, Citadel, they go they go on a feast. Whatever it is, naked shorting, again, I'll say alleged. I'll say alleged. Phantom shares, I'll say alleged. Okay. Ladder attacks, they do all this shit. Next thing you know, AMC is at $35 a share. Next thing you know, it's at $30 a share. Now, Tony De Niro once made a video kind of almost saying that that's impossible. There is no way a company's market cap is, is going to go down that quickly and this and that. All this. Okay. But after what I witnessed in the last two years, anything is possible, right? But what happens in that situation? You see AMC back down. I'm saying now after the one for 10, after we lose 90% of our shares, it's back down to like 20 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever. So now the thing is, don't we all have to now question out of Adam Aaron in terms of, was it the whole point of doing this? Because AMC is this huge brand name. It's the biggest movie theater corporation in the world. You wanted to see AMC stock price, double digits, respectable levels versus single digits. Okay. So is that that the whole point? And you know, he'll probably come up with some kind of an excuse like he always does. Oh, yeah, it's very bad times right now economically. You know, no one's going. He'll probably change his whole tune. No one's going to the movies or whatever. But the thing is that that's what fears me. That's the nightmare part of my dream is that now in theory, if you want to know something, if AMC even maintains its price after the one for 10, meaning it doesn't go down, it doesn't get shorted, it maintains $50 a share. Now I know all of you are going to say, but hey, father, you're never going to get your money back. Hey, father, I'm never going to get my money back. But at least if it stays at that current level, at least I'm not, you know, accruing new losses. You know, I have an opportunity to build up the boat again. You understand? So, I mean, at the very worst case scenario, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind it just staying. Like after the one for 10, it stays at 50 or whatever. But the thing is, now you got people like Boss Blunts. You got people like, uh, you know, everybody out there who's supporting the the yes vote. They're claiming there's going to be a big run, like Ants Trades. Okay, so, well, I know that I know that he one time said Ants Trade it was going to go to 200. I was actually thinking he was saying that before the one for 10 reverse stocks. Went. But let's put that aside. I think it's not like 140 AMC was going to go to, right? But anyway... Or Anthony, let's say the let's say the, the the stock does go up, okay, and let's say Adam Aaron was right, and let's say somehow it goes from fifty to two hundred to three hundred dollars a share. The funny thing is, I'm still probably not going to make money. That's the crazy thing. I I don't even I think I might need it. Like I'm trying to just think of my case. I think AMC might even have to go to like four or five hundred dollars a share. 
I mean, for me to break even. It's like freaking crazy. I don't know. What, I don't want to think about it. So, but again, if this was a slow, drawn out process, and AMC stood at after the one for ten, it stood at fifty. It gradually started going up over the course of the next year or two. Hundred dollars a share, two hundred dollars a share. And I was able to keep accumulating more shares after I just lost like 90% of my shares. And I accumulate more and accumulate more. There may just be a possibility of me breaking even or even making a profit. But now the concept of the Moaz, right? Okay. Is that possible? Um, I guess so. If AMC becomes this fundamentally strong company, they're out of debt, more people are going to the movies, the price of the stock continuously keeps going up, assuming that there are still short sellers in this play, assuming that this one for 10 didn't rescue them and rescued the synthetics, okay? It's all assumption, it's all a big question mark. I could see them running scared. And you might see a $1,000 AMC price. Who knows? But the thing is, is that they're all big question marks. They're big ifs. I don't like the word if. I like certainty. I, I've always lived my life like that. I like closure. I like certainty. But in this effing play, there's so many friggin' uh, K-turns, U-turns, you know, 180s. You get your friggin' dizzy. You feel like you're drinking 10 shots of friggin' uh, Patron. It's, everything is all over the place. The judge is recognizing there's a lot of things Adam Aaron has been doing that has not been ethical, not been professional, and could be potentially considered illegal, criminal. Again, I'll say allegedly. But, again, <laughs> okay, there's a lot of people still for him. There's a lot of people still on Adam Aaron's side. I guess let's see what's going to happen. But that's the full breakdown of AMC. Video's not financial advice. I'm not a financial planner. This video and all my videos are for entertainment purposes only.